Caleb. All right, so I've got a request to do this video for forever, but I always brush it off because I just wasn't that interested. Why? Because just like with most things, it was just a bunch of pointless, random, crybaby hating. Literally, the only reason why most anyone hated this guy to begin with is because he started getting so chummy chummy with Wayne. That is literally the only reason why. At least it used to be. But for many of you, that's still the only reason. You didn't have a problem with him before that. Which really says a lot about Wayne more than anything. So I'm here to be your Emperor Palpatine. I'm here to focus your anger and your hate for legitimate reasons that you can be taken seriously for. That way, you and your dumbass friends stop running around in circles, filling your drawers up with poops, and screaming Drake sucks at the top of your lungs. You can finally stop doing that. But first, we'll do the information thing. Drake is a mulatto, like me, which is a fancy way of saying one parent's black and the other's white. His mother being Jewish white. Jewish Canadian white. That's right, Drake is a Canadian Jew. That is all kinds of cool, man, but not really. At 14, he somehow very easily got on the show Degrassi where he played Brooks, a black kid who was really good at basketball, big shocker, and gets shot by one of the homies and paralyzed. Again, big shocker. Not long after, he released his first mixtape, Room for Improvement, which was good. Then comeback season, which was better. It wasn't long before he caught the attention of Lil Wayne and they started touring together and recorded their first song together, with both of them having verses. Man of the year does not count. Wayne just hobbled his drunk ass in the booth after Drake was done and talked that dumb nigga shit for two minutes. That doesn't count. Ransom was their first song together. That song where Wayne raps the entire alphabet. Yeah, that one. Wayne, real quick, I get that you're strictly a freestyle artist now and have been for years, <coughs> so you say, but dude, put a little more effort into it sometimes. I'm just saying. It's totally okay, man. No one's gonna be mad. Anyway, that song was good, neglecting some perhaps more superficial aspects that were beginning to become more apparent in his lyrics, but I digress. Not long after that, he released his third mixtape, So Far Gone, which was even better, and the world rejoiced. Drake had released multiple mixtapes and worked with all kinds of artists, including ones that most people in the hip-hop community would consider complete douchebags. Then, much to the dismay of many of his fans, he was signed to Young Money, which ended up being not so terrible. He had every resource he needed to release his first studio album, Thank Me Later, which was okay. A little commercial, but it's an album. It's supposed to appeal to the masses through radio play, and that's what it did. On his second album, Take Care, however, you began seeing very noticeable changes in him and his work. And this is where we put our roast shoes on. Will you be my neighbor? First and foremost, I'm a fan of Drake. At least I used to be. And if you say you were never a fan of Drake, or at least like some of his stuff, like, yeah, man, that's cool, that sounds okay, you are a huge pussy. Shut up. Just like all these people who swear up and down they never liked Wayne. Ever. Shut up! You are a pussy too afraid to admit that you once liked what is now basically a burnt out baboon in skinny jeans. I'll admit, I always instantly become a fan of bright skinned black guys like, you know, yeah, man, we gotta stick together. <laughs> Corey Guns, T.I. Hell, I even liked Dollar before he got shot the fuck up in that mall in LA. Yeah, y'all forgot all about him, didn't you? He's dead. He died. I shot him. But no, Drake, you blew it. Your complexion cannot save you from this verbal ass bruising. I can't stand you now. You, you used to be talented. You were. Anyone that says otherwise is fooling themselves. Or they're just, you know, petty haters. Because that is still a thing. If you take his verses and have someone you like say them, your head would nod. Period. Point blank, end of story. But you changed. The money, the fame, more importantly, the company you keep changed you. All those folks that were afraid that Wayne and his cronies were gonna rub off on you, they were right. Now, I don't know who told you to start singing, but dial it back. Not because you sound bad, because you don't. You do sound good, but that's all you do now. All you do is rap sing. You're a rap singer. I can only imagine what your pitch meetings are like. Okay, Drake, what do you got for us this time? Well, I'm gonna bring the realness with this album. I'm gonna give folks something they can spit to in their car and bump out their speakers. Something they can really feel. And I'm gonna sing on it. Okay, great, sounds good. You're known for that melodious rap. Straight to the top, kiddo, straight to the top. All right, Drake, your last single did well. What are you bringing to the table on this project? I got straight bangers this time. Fire the whole way through. Real rap, raw, gritty stuff that people really ain't used to seeing from me, but still relatable. And I'ma sing on it. Good, great. Our numbers show that's still a market for you. People love your pipe. Straight to the top, kiddo. That's where you're going. Straight to the top. All right, Drake, for your next album, we gotta bring them something that'll make them knock the doors down to get to it. What do you got for us? I'm a sing. Why are we paying you so much money? It's become so repetitive. You just keep going back to the same tried and tested formula again and again, and it never changes. Wayne said it best himself. We gonna be okay as long as we put Drake on every hook. It's just the same monotonous, oh, I wish so bad I was out be sure nonsense. Your formula is no longer impressive. Stop it. There is such a thing as playing it too safe. Take some risks, man. I don't fucking know. Just, just rap with a 
Just rap like Batman. <gasps> I don't know if I can do anything. Do it, just do something different. I'll tell you something else, Drake. It's probably gonna hurt your feelings. You can't sing. When you open your mouth, some fairly pleasant sounds come out, but that's not singing. I haven't heard you hit a high note yet. I haven't heard you hit any note that isn't that one fucking tone that you sing in. You sing like you rap using one fucking tone. I remember, I think it was a documentary. I have no idea what it was called. I saw it once on TV like years ago. I don't, I have, I, I don't know what it was called. But in it you said, oh, I take singing lessons because I found out Denzel Washington still takes acting lessons. And if he can keep learning stuff, of course I can keep learning stuff. You ass! How dare you compare your singing skills to Denzel's acting skills? Oh my god. You can get mad if you want to. I know people are gonna get mad. Me telling them they can't sing. I know it. Am I lying though? Am I lying though? Wow. Am I lying though? I actually do wish I was lying though. I'm totally lame in comparison. Thunder! 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 Thundercats! Oh, I'm so stupid. Why does anyone like me? <laughs> oh my god, I understand why people hate me. Don't think I don't, because I do. I, I, I am not a likable person. And you damn right I'm gonna talk about your little punk-ass beef with Chris Brown. Dude, okay, I get it. I get loving abroad and caring for her and protecting her and defending her as your own, but what you did was ridiculous. Just a bunch of whiny bickering with Chris that climax in a fight at a nightclub, if you can even call it that, because as I am to understand it, it was just you guys throwing bottles at each other from across the room. <laughs> Fuck you, Chris! I just realized this is a Canada Dry bottle. Does it please you, Drake, to know that I drink your country's ginger ale? Is this stuff made in Canada? Because it says right here, Plano, Texas. You did manage to get Chris pretty good with one of them, so, you know, kudos for busting up a piece of shit. Chris, you're a piece of shit and you know it. Because you can't control the severity of your beatings. You beat that bitch like she had already shot you twice and you were trying to wrestle the gun from her. All she did was brag about sucking Drake's dick in front of you. That is worthy of an open hand slap to the tits at the most. Chill out, you are such a douche. Anyway, yeah, Drake, stop acting like a simp over this bony big forehead heaven broad. Rihanna, you got a big forehead. But the first thing that really bothered me, the first thing that really made me give you this face right here was when you released from the bottom. And I was compelled to make that face because I never thought you would go there. I remember seeing this interview where you said you would never go for this yeah, I'm a badass, stereotypical rapper. And then you went and did that. Drake, you never had to live below the standard of the middle class. Your mother was a teacher, and your father was at least a somewhat successful musician. You yourself were a child actor. You never wanted for anything. You have no idea what the bottom is like for most people. There must be two bottoms. Give me your bottom, Drake. I want... I want your bottom. <laughs> Give me your bottom, Drake! Oh uh, shit, your features are so soft. Give me your bottom. I'll take your bottom, quick. If it came right down to it, Drake, I would take your bottom. You're friends with Justin Bieber, right? Talk to Justin. Here, let me tell you guys a story very quick. When I was little, I didn't always have the nicest things. Whatever, man. We've all been there. Fuck you. At least my mom had a job. Fucking government cheese, baby. Fuck you. Anyway, I remember getting to wear new clothes for the last day of school. And I didn't care where they came from. They were new to me. These were clothes I did not have yesterday. They were new to me, and that was... Sort of a big deal. Well, it turns out they were from Goodwill and they were a couple of sizes too small. I didn't know that from just looking at them. I didn't try them on the night before. I wore them that day. The shorts were so short. If I wasn't wearing my tidy whities the teacher would have made a pass at me. She would have seen my wiener. Anyway, the kids all made fun of me and said I forgot to wear pants and these are my underwear. Uh. Looking back, I honestly don't know why I thought they were so cool besides the fact that they were new for me. They only came down to like mid-thigh, maybe, and they were red and orange and covered with like little flavor flavor cloth. Yeah, boy! <laughs> Whatever, dude. You've had some pretty awful singles lately, but that one just takes the cake. And now, for no other reason than because I want to, I'm gonna go over there and take a break. Jack off a little bit while my buddy Buckley tells you some stuff about Drake that I have no interest hearing because it didn't come out of my mouth. Buckley, take it away! How the fuck did I end up on this? A show with some guy talking about whacking off in his Flava Flav shorts or whatever? I gotta get a better agent. Hey, MK. You know why no one had a problem with Drake before he met up with Lil Wayne? Because as you sorta of mentioned, he was a fucking wheelchair kid on a Canadian TV show. Who the fuck is gonna say they hate a wheelchair kid? You ever meet anyone that hated Stevie from Malcolm in the Middle? If you did, you know they got their ass kicked. Anyway, from there, in only a few short years, Drake went from being the best Little Wayne impersonator in Canada to the best Little Wayne impersonator in the world. 
You're bitching about Drake singing. He has to sing. It's the only way you can tell him and Lil Wayne apart when they're on the same track, which happens way too fucking often. You got one thing right. He never started from the bottom. Drake claims that for a time, he lived in the poor area of Toronto. But there's no gangsta cred in that. You might as well say he grew up in the poor area of Thousand Oaks, California. And by the way, I never liked Lil Wayne. Go DJ blows. Go DJ, that's my DJ. Fucking shit. Sure, he did some shit before that, but you have to really like rap to have cared. And that's the thing, you're talking about mixtapes? Despite the general public's love of free shit, the average music listening population isn't listening to a guy's mixtape before he gets big. That's how it works. The average Lil Wayne fan bought the Carter four months after it dropped, then YouTubed or torrented all his old shit, and then claimed they'd been a fan since the beginning. That's what people do. They're the same dipshits who, if they were alive in the late 60s, would have claimed they were at Woodstock, but really they just stayed home and got baked and listened to the Beatles' magical mystery tour, and they couldn't name a Jimi Hendrix song until after he died. And if anyone ever needed a reason to hate Drake besides his association with Wheezy F Baby, the fucking motto. It's all Drake's fault 15-year-old girls are on Twitter saying, Smoke four joints and fuck my stepbrother. YOLO! Was Drake ever talented? Fucked if I know, I'm Canadian and I never heard his name until Bedrock, the song that also unleashed Nicki Minaj onto the innocent public. The fuck we do to deserve that? The only comfort someone might be able to take is that even though Drake never started from the bottom, he'll likely end up there. I've said it before, the average rapper's fame doesn't last past 40. Less than a handful have done it, and I don't think Drake's got the chops. He better see if he can get in on Denzel's acting classes, go back to working in TV, and sell out like Ice Cube did, or else 10 years from now, he'll be back in the ghettos of Toronto with his free health care and government-subsidized housing. Yeah, the Canadian bottom is still pretty sweet. Was that a train? Do I live next to a train? Gee, thanks, Buckley. That was mildly entertaining. <laughs> I don't know, man. I guess, more than anything, I'm frustrated with you because you used to have such awesome talent. You used to say such real things. You had such a quick wit and such a depth to the content of what you said, and now it's just not there. You've replaced it with YOLOs and mottos and singing. You're making this transition to this generic, poppy, superficial sound that everyone seems to be turning to these days, and I just hate to see you do it. And I understand that's what's selling right now, but dude, you don't need the money, and you know you don't. You don't have to change your sound, man. So many of us wanted you to stay true to the form you had and so far gone. Ah, uh, Drake, I hope you find that sound again, brother. I really do. And now I'm gonna go. As always, there's some stuff in the description for you. And yes, check the fucking description. You never check the description. For all you know, I'll put a link down there. Hey, click this and you get some free chocolate. You didn't see it, so you didn't get the free chocolate. Oh, I don't like chocolate. Yes, you do. Shut up. Stupid. Hey, fuck you! Oh shit!